Ken Allman with Walsh Marine Products. Oftentimes I receive calls from customers looking for ideas on mooring for their buoys and floats. In today's video, we hope to shed some light on different options for your hardware with respect to rigging and give you some ideas and general rules of thumbs uh, for the rigging hardware. The difference between chain and cable rigging. Vinyl coated cable, two thimbles, four cable clamps, one swivel, and one anchor shackle. I'd like to now show you an example of rigging hardware using our 9 inch regulatory buoy and cable. In setting up the hardware using cable, you can see we start off at the buoy itself and the buoy anchor point with the anchor shackle. The anchor shackle is then connected to the swivel. The swivel has already been assembled to the cable using the thimble. The thimble is held into the cable with the two cable clamps. The two remaining cable clamps and thimble would be applied to the anchor at the base or which you would submerge into the water. I'd like to use my 13 inch regulatory buoy to show an example of the rigging hardware and chain. Here utilizing chain, we start at the base of the buoy with the anchor shackle, moving on to the swivel, another anchor shackle, the chain, leading down to our anchor and another anchor shackle. In making your hardware decision, it's important to note the difference between stainless steel hardware versus galvanized hardware. The full accompaniment uh, and sizes are available in both stainless steel and galvanized. Galvanized typically would be used in freshwater applications where stainless steel, it would be imperative to utilize in a salt water or a brine application. Certainly stainless steel can be utilized in fresh water as well, uh, this being the epitome of, of hardware from a strength standpoint as well as a longevity standpoint. At Walsh Marine Products, we manufacture all of our various size of floats in two different models swivel IMs and pipes. Here have an example of our 13 inch barrier float in a swivel eye configuration and an example of our 18 by 30 inch float with pipe through. We would like to show you some examples of rigging for these two models. When rigging the pipe through model, as I showed here with our 1830, it's as easy as running a continuous piece of cable and stringing the floats on as you would beads on a, a, a bracelet. And then simply putting cable clamps on either side of the float itself. In this example, I have stainless steel pipe with the stainless steel cable clamps. On the swivel eye model, I have one end pre-assembled. And I'll demonstrate the other end assemb assembly. You start with a predetermined length of cable in between your floats. Apply the thimble to the end of the swivel. Wrap the cable through and around the thimble. And then simply slide the cable clamps as tight to the thimble as you can get them. And simply tighten down.
one of the benefits of having the swivel ions is that if you have a very long barrier float system, rather than pulling the whole system aside to access the inside or the outside, one can simply break the system and either by boat or however you're traveling, go into the area that's desired to either maintain. Thank you for watching this video with respect to rigging and hardware for regulatory buoys and barrier floats. At Walsh Marine Products, we look forward to helping you with all of your hardware and rigging needs.